again. Yeah, I, I hate that part actually. Hey everyone, Lacey Green here for D News with a very special guest, Dr. Ian O'Neill, Discovery News resident solar physicist and by proxy doomsday specialist. It's a pleasure to have you here on D News. Thanks for coming. Well, thank you, Lacey, for inviting me on to this frankly depressing video. We like depressing here at D News. So I asked Ian to join me today because, well, civilization is on the verge of collapse, and this ain't some 2012 crap. It's for serious this time, at least according to a NASA backed study that will be published in the journal Ecological Economics. The prediction of collapse is based on the idea that throughout the history of humanity, there's a cycle of rising and collapsing amongst successful empires. Right, for instance, look at the rise and fall of the mighty Roman Empire. Right, and there was also the Mayan empires, the Byzantine and Mesopotamian empires. There have been hundreds, and very few have survived. So, do you think that the Western world is headed toward a similar demise? They think yes, uh, based on the risk factors they've identified, population, climate, water, agriculture and energy. Handled improperly by a civilization, these factors can culminate in some big problems, despite how technologically advanced we become. So technology isn't going to help yeah, us this time. computers won't save you now. Or your iPad. With the way we're doing things, two large threats have emerged. Number one, stretching our resources too far and creating a dangerous ecological strain. And number two, increasing extreme economic stratification. That basically means there is a widening divide between the elites, or the very rich, and the commoners, the masses of the poor. Right, and they found that overwhelmingly it's the elites that are responsible for overconsumption. In Gleb Pasha's book, The Fate of Empires, he writes that all empires have a life cycle. So first there's the age of outbursts where the empire is created, then the age of conquest, conquering outside forces, the age of commerce, so developing internal stability, the age of affluence, the age of intellect, the age of decadence, and then a decline and ultimate collapse. So this study finds that our collapse will come down to the fact that the elites in society will consume more than we have, leading to the commoners to experience the famine of resources before total collapse. We could be symbolically in the age of decadence. Right, do you think that this is a more legitimate cause for alarm than something like Y2K or 2012? Yes, I mean the key difference here is this NASA study is based on science and historic record. Right. So we need to take note and we need to actually pay attention to these trends that are going on. When we think about doomsday though, we're often sucked into some crazy end of world theory involving impacts by non-existing asteroids, killer solar flares, aliens. Take the 2012 doomsday hype for example, that apparently we survived quite easily, we're still here. That was based on some crackpot theory that the Mayans predicted our demise thousands of years ago. Of course, they didn't. This NASA study, however, isn't based on myth, superstition, or someone's overactive imagination. Yeah, people, you know, they tend to get a little crazy about these things, which is understandable. I mean, it strikes at a very real human fear. When discussing any end of civilization study, it's important to understand the facts. Although this new report is pretty frightening and is firmly based in science, it doesn't predict a sudden catastrophic doomsday. Perhaps more worrying is that it predicts a downward spiral for humanity in the near and midterm. The traditional doomsday mongering could be left to the crackpots and soothsayers. <laughs> Well said. And I think that slow spiral is what makes it more insidious in a sense. It's easier to ignore it and just kind of go along with how things are and pretend that it's not happening. So what do you guys think? Tell us your thoughts down below and check out more of Ian's work at discoverynews.com.